Assalamu alaikum everyone and today we are going to be talking about more in depth into nuclear reactions. So before we begin, let's start with a concept that we have to be introduced to. The amount of energy that holds a proton and a neutron within the nucleus is the same amount of energy that is released when removed. And this can be expressed by the equation E is equals to mc squared. Oh, I've been waiting so long to explain this. E is equals to mc squared, also known as the mass energy equivalence equation is basically saying that mass and energy are basically the exact same thing. This is a much harder concept, concept than what it looks at the surface. So let's break it down. Imagine an oxygen atom's nucleus with eight protons, eight neutrons. So what would you think? Oh, the eight protons, the eight neutrons, the masses that add up is the mass of the oxygen atom. Atom. Yeah, that's completely false. The, if you were to add that up and see the actual mass of the oxygen atom, you'd see that there is precisely 0 0.14 AMU less than the addition of 8 protons and 8 neutrons. Why is that? Where did the 0 0.14 AMU go? That missing mass is actually present in the nucleus as a form of energy that is holding the nucleus together. This is called a mass defect. The mass defect for oxygen is negative 2.269 times 10 to the 28th kilograms. To, now let's plug in this to our mass energy equivalence equation. So we have negative 2.269 times 10 to the 28 kilograms times the speed of light squared. We get this number, negative 2.04 times 10 to the to the negative 11 joules per nucleus the the negative in here of course means that the energy is being released so this is a minuscule amount of energy nothing much right plug that in with avogadro's number for oxygen you get negative 1.23 times 10 to the 13th joules per mole. Now, if you're confused, to produce this much energy with coal in a factory, for example, it would take 420 metric tons of coal to produce that energy. This is huge. And this is a lot of energy. That is what we mean by nuclear energy. The energy that is released when the protons and neutrons and the atom are removed. There are two ways to remove that. Nuclear fusion, nuclear fusion. Nuclear fission is basically when a large atom is broken down into two small atoms or more. And a nuclear fusion reaction is when two atoms are fused together, combined to form one atom. This, of course, creates lots of energy in the process. Let's look at this graph. You see, atoms like with a high binding energy like iron-56 are really to undergo nuclear, nuclear reactions with masses that are higher than iron-56 are likely to undergo nuclear fission, whereas masses lower are likely to undergo nuclear fusion. Fission is the reaction we use more because we can control it better in nuclear power plants. We don't talk about bombs right now. The main fuel source for nuclear fission for us is uranium. This is hit with a neutron that releases atoms in the process. Krypton, yes, it's a real thing. Barium, 
three free neutrons and a whole lot of energy. The energy that is released is mainly formed as heat, but some can be released as radiation. Let's look at a practical example of this in the nuclear power plant. You see, in the nuclear power plant, there is the reactor with the you know, control rods, there are fuel containers, and then there are the turbines which power the entire city. Now, there are some serious drawbacks with this setup. First of all, atoms rarely exist in isolation. So, when you hit that one atom of uranium, it produces three free neutrons. What do those three free neutrons do? Attack more uranium. What does that produce? More neutrons. More hit, more neutron, more hit, more neutron. Temperature rising due to the heat. And yeah, that's a chain reaction in a nutshell. And these temperatures can rise to such high levels it can actually melt the uranium in the reactor, which causes a react uranium meltdown. That is basically what happened in places like Chernobyl and Fukushima. But we have a way to counter that. You see control rods? That's what we use. The control rods absorb the neutrons to slow down that reaction. It's not gonna go as fast, so everything is under control but there is again a flaw you saw those leftover barium and neutron krypton those will again break down because those are still unstable and those will break down again producing more neutrons more energy than we can control and these will eventually you know get stable but what's the half-life oh around half a million years so yeah, don't expect that to become stable anytime soon right now. So what we basically do is store them out of the reactor so that they don't get in our way for now. But fusion reactions, oh, that is a whole another type. The energy produced in a fusion reaction, you think not like similar? No, it rivals the amount of energy produced in a fission reaction. Let's take an example. The sun. The nuclear reactions in the sun start when two hydrogen atoms join together to form an isotope of hydrogen. This, which is shown here. And there is heat energy produced in the process. Then the hydrogen joins in with the isotope, forming helium and loads of gamma radiation. And after the helium is broken down, there are new hydrogens to restart the pro uh, process. This, as you may have recognized, is also a chain reaction, but it's not like the one we saw in our nuclear reactor causing meltdown. This has six hydrogen inputs. It only brings out two. That means the sun will slowly run out of hydrogen in about 5 billion years, yes. Now we can have a fusion reactor in Earth too, but we can't really control it. So it's not really useful at all. This prevents us from having fusion as a source of energy, which would be really awesome. This would have much more energy, and it could even, and this is a hypo hypothetical situation, but it could even be an engine for spacecraft. And the only thing preventing us is controlling it. The light nuclei fusing to go under a heavy energy change is, is more than the heavy nuclei can break apart. This means that their rea reactions release far more energy than fission reactions. It's so great, it is nearly impossible to contain or therefore use. Also, if that wasn't enough, fusion reactions occur when two atoms are fused together. This is saying a positive nuclei, positive nuclei joining together. 
it will occur when there are high speeds and high pressure with temperatures at around 100 million Kelvin with which is tremendous energy and with that amount of energy the matter actually exists in the form of plasma so yeah that's basically it with nuclear reactions thank you for all for watching and i will see you next time bye